They went. I'd like to welcome those who are with us at home and those that are here today. And I would encourage the home listeners um, to come and be with us in church. It's been a, a goodly while since the pandemic hit. And um, I know there is still fear out there. But God knew you're coming in and you're going out before the foundation of the earth was even laid, before creation took place. And I don't think there's anything we can do to change that. Um, don't live your life in fear. Put your trust in the Lord. Our first hymn for this morning uh, is, we, is in your handout. It's, Lord, open now my heart to hear. Also, the second communion hymn has a different tune than we're used to. Deborah's going to play the tune you know. So if you read music, don't get uptight that uh, it's not that music. But we need to accommodate those who know the words to the old tune. So we will be using the old tune. Okay? Lord, open now my heart to hear. We begin in the name of the only true God, the triune God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you. And for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of God's word, I announce his grace to you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I hope for your salvation, O Lord. And I do your commandments. I rejoice at your word. Like one who finds great sorrow. Seven times a day I praise you. For your just and righteous decrees. 
Great peace have those who love your law. Many can make them stumble. My soul keeps your testimonies. I love them exceedingly. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I hope for your salvation, O Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord be with each of you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show mercy to your people in all their troubles. Grant us always to recognize your goodness. Give thanks for your compassion and praise your holy name through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The readings today are a little bit different than what's in the bulletin. The first reading, the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, is taken from Habakkuk, chapters 1, verses 1 through 4, in chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The prophecy that Habakkuk, the prophet, received, How long, Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen or cry out to you. Violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abound. Therefore, the law is paralyzed. And justice never prevails. The wicked, him and the righteous, so that justice is perverted. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. 
I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that the herald may run with it. For a revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See the enemy, it puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous person will live by the faithfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason I remember you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearance of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immorality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed to herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know who I have believed and am conceived Convinced, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. What you heard from me, keep as a pattern of sound, teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The gospel for this Sunday is recorded in Luke's gospel, the 17th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Jesus said to his disciples, Things that cause people to sin are bound to come. But woe to the person through whom they come. It would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around his neck than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. So watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day, And seven times he comes back and says, I am sorry. Forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And he replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Would he say to the servant, when he comes in from the field, come along now, sit down and eat? Or would he not rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and serve me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also 
when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. This is the word of the Lord. Let us confess our faith in the true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, through the Nicene Creed as we find it in our service folder. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things that dwell in him faithfully, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by the law of things were made, who for us men was incarnate by the Holy Spirit from the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again from glory to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the glory of the Lord. Please be seated and join in singing, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. God's grace and his peace be with each of you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Something very special happened um, to us. Most of you know that we have 
a, a, a timeshare that we really love down in Florida. It, uh, it's called Orange Lake Country Club. It has four golf courses on the property. <laughs> and you know why I love it. And, and, and so the hurricane hit. Luckily, it wasn't damaged. Some palm trees got their limbs knocked off them. But we got a call from a, a little lady. How old is she now? 90? Dot? Dot can't hear me. How old is the lady that called us from California about Orange Lake? 86. Okay. She was worried that our timeshare got destroyed. And, and Mona um, is just a lovely, lovely Christian. Um, she likes to go to church early, so she always went to the contemporary worship service, uh, even though they would have probably preferred the traditional. But she liked being out at church by 9 o'clock. Okay? She had the rest of the day to, to enjoy and be blessed by God. Her husband, unfortunately, has passed away. He um, was a fighter. Um, he used to fight uh, on Monday night fights back in the 50s. Yeah, he was, uh, when he got out of the Navy, he was a, he was a professional prize fighter. Uh, just lovely people. Um, but she was really concerned. That's Christian love. It really is. Um, over the years, we've had this happen to us over and over again. But pastoring churches, you see all sides of people's lives. And in many cases, you do see those who aren't acting as well as they should. And the scripture reading from the gospel today uh, talks about that. It talks about forgiveness. Why did God forgive you? Do you know why he forgave you? Yeah, because he loved us. Yeah. But also, he has forgiven us so that we also can forgive. Now, in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Luke, Matthew, Luke, and Mark, they look at many times at the same situation, but they say it through their eyes and their words. And so this discourse about forgiveness does show up, and especially in Matthew. One of the disciples says to Jesus, how many times must I forgive? Now, and the imperative here, must. Like, this is an obligation. Uh, my brother, seven times? Now, this was the idea of the church in that day. Okay? You forgave your brother seven times. And Jesus says, no, not seven times. Seventy times seven times. Now, he's not enumerating the number here. He doesn't mean that after 491 times that you've forgiven your brother, you don't forgive him. Okay? The, the 70 times 7 means you continually forgive. How often has your Father in heaven forgiven you? I cannot even fathom the number of sins that my Heavenly Father through his son, has forgiven me for. Um, every time I get in the car, I sin. Zoom! No, I've got stop and aim. It's that simple. And, and so if the speed limit is 75 and I go 80, I've already done what? I've already committed a sin. Fourth commandment. Okay, Honor thy father and mother. The fourth commandment goes past your father and mother, and it really speaks to obey all authority that God has placed over you. Well, the Texas government has deemed that road out there, 19, to be, in this county, 75 miles an hour. 
you got to watch out when you leave the county because it drops down to what? 70. And if you go in die ball, they will ticket you. Okay? So, you are supposed to follow the speed limit. It's a sin to go over that speed limit by even a half a mile an hour because it says 75. 75 and a half is what? Too much. Well, my foot goes, and, and, and this, this um, car that we replaced the Altima with is a three-cylinder turbo, and you put your foot down, and that rogue just, whoosh, it'll hit 100 real fast, okay? So you've got to be careful. Um, how many times has God forgiven you your sin in Christ? Remember, Christ died for every single sin you have committed or will commit. So how often does God forgive you? Continually in Christ. Why is it that we Christians aren't as forgiven as our Heavenly Father is? And it's unfortunate. We tear down. We don't build up. We tattle to others about things people haven't done. We bear false witness against our neighbors. Just look at these supposed Christian politicians as they talk about other party Christians. They don't lift up their brothers and sisters in the faith. They tear them down. They assassinate their characters. They destroy their reputations. They lie. They cheat. They do everything they can to get one vote away from that other person. Where is their loyalty to the scripture? And I'm not talking about one party. I'm talking about every single one of them. Because I hear them all tearing each other down. I was listening the other day, and uh, they were destroying President Carter. Okay, he was a peanut farmer. Maybe he shouldn't have been president, but he was. After he left the White House, do you know what he started to do? Do you know what he does? Yeah, he builds houses for those who need them. He has been working for Habitat for Humanity for years and years. He doesn't just talk his Christian faith. He lives it out. I remember that he was condemned by the media because he gave a Bible to one of the Arab country leaders, and they just crucified him for it. But he lived his faith out. Now, I don't like his politics, but I sure admire his walk with Christ. He thinks differently than many do, but he thinks the same as many do as well. This congregation is multicultural, but we're also multi-political. I would hate to hear someone tearing down a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ because they belong to a specific party. But people do it. People do it. How many times do I forgive my brother when my brother sins against me? Well, Jesus lays out a formula. The very first thing I do is not forgive him at all. 
What does Jesus say in the Gospels? If your brother sins against you, do what? Rebuke him. To rebuke means to call his actions into question. The Greek word for that, to call his actions into question, is krino. It's also the exact same word for judge, condemn, examine, discern. discern. Yeah. So you examine what has happened. You call his actions into question. And if he says, I'm sorry, you can do no less than your Father in heaven has done with you. You must forgive him. But wait a minute, wait a minute, Pastor. What if he turns around and does it again? Well, what did Jesus say? The way Jesus expresses it, he, he, he most likely will. But if he says he's sorry, to say you're sorry is to repent. To repent means this. That's what repent means. I turn around and I go in the opposite direction. I turn from that sin. I feel remorse for that sin. And I confess that sin. And if I confess my sin, God is faithful and just to forgive my sin, and I'm forgiven. Well, my brother or my sister is no less than me. If they sin against me, and I point that sin out to them, and I call their actions into question, and they are convicted of that sin, and they repent, they say they're sorry, I cannot do anything less than forgive them. Not once, not twice, not seven. Not 70 times seven, because I've already hit that 80 mark a lot more than 491 times. I've got the tickets for it too, but, you know. Sins do have consequences, okay? And if you're going to go speeding through die ball, you're going to get a ticket. And they are expensive for it. Don't do it. If your brother or sister sins against you, and that means anyone in the faith, call it as it is, point it out to them, and if they ask for forgiveness, forgive them. Okay, now... If you will not forgive, especially on a day like today, what, what, what's so special about today? Do you know why you're here? Do you? Well, it's the Lord's Day, yes, but why are you here? Do you know that you have been moved by the Holy Spirit for a very special purpose? You're not here because you have to be, even though the law says that you, what, honor the Sabbath day? To honor the Sabbath day is to not despise the preaching of God's word. And you're not here because it's the in thing to do. Nowadays, being in church is not the in thing. Um, and you're not here because this is what you normally do on a Sunday morning. You're here because the Holy Spirit has moved you to come here to hear that your sins are forgiven and receive the sacrament, God's testament of the forgiveness that is yours through the body and the blood of Christ. That's why you're here. You are here to be forgiven so that you can be a forgiver. But, what does it say in the Lord's Prayer? Forgive me my, I know the old King James, trespasses. People don't understand that, so I prefer sin. Forgive me my sin as I forgive those who sin against me. If you can't do that, 
then you have a problem. Because Paul specifically said that you ought to discern the body and the blood of Christ and receive it worthily in faith. And if you cannot forgive your brother or sister in the faith when they ask for forgiveness, you, when you come to the supper, are eating and drinking the body and the blood of Christ to your own damnation. You are taking your eternal life into your hands. Because in the prayer, you've already asked God, if I don't forgive, don't forgive me. And if you take that supper unworthily, not discerning that Christ died for those sins and not willing to forgive as Christ forgives you, you have an eternal problem. And you're being rebuked right now. Turn from that sin. And God will forgive you. We are all guilty of that. Every one of us. We're not perfect. We are forgiven. But through the perfection of Christ, not through our perfection, because we are lost and condemned sinners without Christ. There is no hope. Jesus gave his life for us while we were yet sinners. That yet is still there. We're still sinners. But he gave his life for us so that we would have his grace. Ask God if you are not forgiving your brother or sister when they have asked for that forgiveness to forgive you. But ask him by the power of the Holy Spirit to help you to amend your sinful life and be a person of grace, receiving it and offering it. You're better than the world. There's a, um, a, a thing on YouTube, and um, it's called Pro Revenge. And it's all about people getting revenge against people who have done them wrong. There's no grace at all. I mean, they are vicious. That's not what a Christian should be. And as I've looked at these, most of them are actually in Europe, India, Pakistan. They're Hindus, Muslims, non-believers. That's not us. We are not to look for revenge. Who said revenge is mine? Well, the Lord did. It's his purview. It's not ours. Because if he was looking for revenge, there'd be no grace. But we have that very special gift. You see, that's a gift that God has given to Christians the forgiveness of sin. For without it, we would have no hope of everlasting life. But because of it, we have a place in heaven forever. How many times are you to forgive? You look at your own life, your own sin life, you look at how often God in Christ has forgiven you, and then you try to outdo God. Well, you're not going to, but you should be trying to. You forgive over and over and over again. But I have heard, oh, what that person did, I cannot forgive. Well, you're no different from that person. 
and God forgives you, are you better than God? Of course not. Be an example of God and be a person of grace. Show mercy and grace to those that sin against you. And when they say, I'm sorry, say, I forgive you. It's not hard. Every married guy, raise your hand. Now, come on. Okay. Every one of you have lived through this, haven't you? You've gone to your wife and you've said, I'm sorry. And graciously, she said, I forgive you. Yeah, sometimes, well, that's when you hit him in the back of the head, Sharon. You know, don't let him get away with it. Just because he's a head elder doesn't mean he gets to get away with things, okay? Be forgiving. Be a person of grace. Now, may the peace that Christ gives to us, which goes way beyond our human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus, your Savior and Lord. Amen. Um, let us uh, look at, what's the next thing I got on the agenda here? Prayer. So let us go to prayer. If you would, please rise. Um, Sandra, am I saying this right? Lace? Lace. That's the, uh, the baby's name. Lace Reed. Uh, and so, Lord, we place Leif in your tender care, trusting in your grace to him. I pray that the family have baptized Leif. And if not, may the family members here encourage that they do. They don't need a pastor there to baptize. The pastor will ratify the baptism later and announce it to the church. Place your hand of healing on this child. Strengthen it, Lord, in its body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we pray for the needs of the congregation, for our shut-ins, for the genes Gerald and Morris, bless and keep them, Lord, in your care. Strengthen and preserve them. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. For Bill, for Brent, for Steve, who are all suffering from leukemia. Strengthen and preserve them. We ask that you would be with David as he battles skin cancer and other health problems. Be with Linda. Place your hand on her broken shoulder and help the doctors to heal that bone. Be with Brian Lord, who has been moved to Longview Regional Hospital because of infection in the incision sites and in his lung. Help them to Care for him, Lord, and deal with those infections. Lord, in your mercy, for Clarice, who will be having a defibrillator inserted on the 20th, let this procedure help her, Lord, and bring her heart into compliance. Lord, in your mercy, for Henry Wooten, who's having a birthday on the 4th, and Ari, who will have one on the 8th. Strengthen them, Lord, and make a blessing for them. Be with Dana and Taro, who are going to celebrate an anniversary. Make it one of hope in their life together and in their love for you. Lord, in your mercy, yes. be with Dot. She's had four good days, Lord, Continue that. Place your hand upon her. 
And I thank you, Lord, for the advice that Dana gave us last week, that when she drives in the passenger seat, close her eyes, and she didn't get sick today. And I give praise and thanks to her and you, Lord, for that suggestion, because it worked. Lord, in your mercy, yes. for our military, for Austin, for Brittany, Marcus, and Nicholas, strengthen and preserve them in your grace and show mercy to them as they stand a watch to keep this nation free. In your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all of those for whom we pray, trusting in your grace and praying that prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, We will continue our service we'll say goodbye to those who are viewing us thank you for tuning in and there are new uploads coming up we finally got the system hopefully in check so join us again next week